Hello everyone, welcome to our interview with Luis Andres. She, he is from Ecuador, he is audiologist, uh, he works a lot in Latin America region. I met him uh, last year in Spain family retreat and we have a close relationship. After that, that uh, meeting, uh, he came to Istanbul, uh, we talked a lot. Uh, today we will discuss the microtia, the psychological effects. Uh, and the numbers and about his works in Latin America. So, Luis Andres, uh, welcome to our interview. Happy to see you again. Uh, I hope everything is okay for you. Uh, so, let me start by asking you that question. Uh, uh, what's microship? Before, before all, uh, could you introduce yourself to us, please? Okay, hi Emre, thank you. Thanks a lot for this interview and it's very nice to see you again and I hope to return to Istanbul. Maybe yeah. the idea was this year, but I guess we'll be the next year. Okay, my name is Luis Andres, as you said. Um, I am an MD, I am a medical doctor and I have a specialization in audiology. I work in audiology almost 23 years and at this time I am working a lot with children uh, my, my specialization is uh, diagnostic, uh, having problems in children. And maybe five years ago, I am working a lot with microtia in Latin America. I have office in Mexico City. I have office in, in Ecuador, of course, uh, in Bolivia. Uh, I am working in Peru. And I am opening now a new office in Bogota, in Colombia. Why? Maybe you ask why I am working a lot. Because microtia is... Um, very so frequent. What's, 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 what's microtia or microtia? What's microtia? Yeah, yeah it's, it's the pronunciation is different. Okay, what's microtia? Let, let me let me put let me put a, a, a presentation. Maybe it's better if we do that because it's very easy to, to explain. Microtia is a congenital malformation. Uh, let me see. Maybe we can show this. Okay, just give me a minute, please. And you show you, you tell me if you can see the presentation. Something is not working here. I'm going to share it now. Just let me, let me find. Okay, well, this is a congenital malformation that uh, comes with uh, problems in external ear, especially maybe with this. Are you looking at that? Yeah. Okay, so sorry, it's in Spanish, I, uh, I didn't translate, but the definition is a congenital malformation where you can find, oh, as the name said, malformation in the external ear especially, but it comes maybe in 90% of more of the cases without the ear canal, the external ear canal. It could be an atresia or stenosis of the ear canal. is narrow or is completely upset. And that is the problem. Because many people said, or many people think, uh, um, the problem is uh, how the, the, the microtia is present. For example, are you looking at that? We can have uh, grades of microtia. It, it means how the, the malformation is present in the baby. So you have grade one, it's almost normal, and you have grade four without any sign of uh, external ear. But that is not really the problem. The problem is if there is or not air canal, yeah. because that's why we have the hearing loss in the children. So uh, many people said, I am happy because my child is just grade one. And many people said, no, I am very sad. My, my, my child has the grade four and is terrible because, no, no. The problem is there is air canal or not, because yeah. I have uh, hearing loss and that is the real problem. So um, when I have these situations in Latin America, we have a uh, lot of cases. That's why many people said, for example, Ecuador is the first country in the world. No, I don't know if that's a number or not. It's the first country in the world with microtia. But uh, in my, my work, I found a um, lot of numbers. Maybe let me see if we can check this. The problem is, I don't know why I have I have the presentation. Yeah. See, the problem is, I don't know. Why. Yeah. yeah, but uh, I don't know why you're looking just the one. 
the one is like I want to show you the numbers and let me see that because that's interesting many many times as a doctors uh, we talk about uh, statistics and we said okay we have uh, many cases uh, in the country uh, but it's better if you see the numbers and that's important okay are you looking at that Okay, yeah, this is, uh, uh, we said many times microtia is present in one or two babies uh, of each uh, 10,000 of births. Yeah, that's the normal statistics in the world. But in Ecuador and Bolivia is almost 10 times that, that uh, statistics. It means I can have one or two cases uh, of every 1,000 births. Yeah. That's terrible. So it means, for example, in Ecuador, I have normally or statistically, I have more than 300 cases by year of microtia. Bolivia is the same, 200 cases by year. And in Latin America, uh, the average is more than 2,000 cases of microtia by year. Yeah, it's... So, it's so it's a, it's a lot of numbers, yeah. I have, um, in, in my work, I have at this time registered more than 3,000 cases. Oh. I had, yeah, I attended personally more than 1,700 cases in, in the countries. But I have, I send you, uh, remember I send you uh, um, a chart online that the, the, the parents can fill. And I have the information, for example, in other countries that I am not present, Venezuela, Costa Rica, Argentina. So I am increasing the number of information that I have a very, very good statistics about microtia in Latin America. I can show you a lot of things. Yeah. So it's interesting. I don't know how in, in other countries I said, uh, oh, I read in China is frequent, in Japan is frequent. I don't know how it's in Turkey statistically because I don't have the information of birth, I don't have the information of population. But we can maybe uh, share these and, and, and to compare yeah. how could be the, the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the most challenging part uh, for families of being micro microtia? Okay. You know, uh, I, yeah, I, I, I especially ask for Latin America countries. Yeah, okay. That, that's why I told you it's very different in countries. Normally, the, f the first challenge in, 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 the, in the families is the aesthetic. Yeah. Okay. They, as I said, they want the perfect child. They want the dreamy child. And the child comes without one ear or without both ears. And that's the first problem. Yeah. And what's the situation? If the doctors, pediatricians, ENT, doesn't inform correctly to the family, yeah. they start... Uh, to perform a lot of wrong decisions. Yeah. So uh, let, let me put something, maybe it's, it's, it's easy to explain with, uh, with this. Uh, when, when, when I talk about microtia, I said we need um, a team of specializations because we have to focus the microtia in, 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 a, in a few manners. In, in, let me, let me think. Yeah, I want to show you this. We need, we need to, to work with the other doctors, like a team, to do this. Okay, it's in Spanish, but I'm going to translate. When I have my crotcha, I have to focus in, in, all the, in all the situations. First, the diagnostic. It's just my crotcha, or it comes with another uh, abnormalities or other syndromes. Down syndromes, trichel collins syndromes, for example. Yeah. I have to make a good diagnostic in hearing. Okay, is normal hearing, is conductive hearing loss, is neurosensorial hearing loss. To, uh, we have to, we need to feed the, the, the child um, early. Um, I, I normally put uh, or feed hearing aids or bone vibrator systems since six months after the birth. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Even unilateral hearing loss or in bilateral hearing loss. Uh, we have to work in aesthetic. Of course, we have to work in aesthetic many times, but it depends on the family. Okay? For example, in Ecuador, Colombia, and Mexico, families does, uh, don't care a lot about the aesthetic. Really, don't care a lot about the aesthetic. They, they say, okay, my child has the problem. Uh, maybe sometimes we can do or we can 
try, uh, think about the surgery to reconstruct the the the, 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 the external ear. But in some other countries, like Peru, for example, or Bolivia, the aesthetic is in the first time. <laughs> yeah, really. So, yeah. So for example, in Peru. Uh, Luis, yeah. uh, uh, while we are uh, mentioning about the ASICL, I want to say something about it. As Happy Faces Association or Face Equality International, as you know, uh, we want to people to be accepted as who they are rather than how they look. So, but to do I that, to functional fun, function is the first priority for us. For exactly, example, exactly, hearing. exactly. That that's yes. the idea. The hearing that is the first part. What do you think? The, what should be the first uh, issue for families? First, Aesthetic or the quality of hearing? What do you advise? Um, the the functional the functional uh, si functional situation is the first. The hearing yes. is the first. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have we have a sentence here. Uh, a, ch a child with microtia will accept that situation if the family accepts that situation. That's the first thing. If the family uh, says, "Okay, my child has the malformity, but doesn't care to me, or don't care it to me," okay, the child is going to have the same feeling. Yeah. But if the family thinks, "Oh, this is the world, the end of the world." I don't know how my child is going to, to be about this in the future, and maybe it's going to put a problem in the feeling of the child in the future. For example, as I say, in Peru, when I have children in Peru, normally they have the hair like a helmet yeah. to cover the hair, the, the, malformating, the malformation, and the, the children has, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, um, complex or they are worried about how they look yeah. and when you put that in the first time you have a lot of problems yeah. because if, if the, the, the child is bilateral for example there's going to be a very good problem very, very bad problem in, in speech uh, development even when I have unilateral uh, microtia, for example, in Bolivia, when I have a child with microtia in the right side, they have a lot of problems with speech development. Uh, okay. Yeah, and, and yeah, it's maybe absence of language, just yeah. with one end. So uh, when I gave my presentations, when I go to our countries and I speak to the families, I try to put these in, 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 in the first time, hearing, Hearing, yeah. Family, and in the last time, aesthetic. Because, yeah. why? Because uh, we use to reconstruct externally, we use um, uh, cartilage, how do you say, cartilage um, implant from the cartilage in, in, the, in, in the chest to reconstruct, uh, to reconstruct the, the external ear, but after the 10 years of birth. Yeah. Not before. And why we do, the, we do the that? Because we want the child to decide if they want the surgery or not, not the family. The child has to decide. Sure. And we, we also suggest the same thing. We want their, the, the families to decide, uh, to give the, this decision to their children. They can exactly. decide that they, they become older. Right? Exactly. Are, are their bodies and they have to decide it. And it's so expensive also in Turkey. I don't know the, uh, how much. Well, uh, as an aesthetic it's surgery, it's, it's, it's expensive. He's, uh, normally, it's between $8,000 to $15,000. Yeah, sure. So, uh, Luis, uh, will you show anything from the presentation or we can talk together now? Yeah, no, no problem. I can, just can yeah, okay. Then, uh, you talk about the numbers in Latin America, and I would like to ask you, uh, how is the service quality in uh, Latin America countries? For it depends the country. To, yeah, in, to reach the doctors uh, like you, uh, or and how many people can take a service from the uh, uh, state or government? Okay, it depends the country. Uh, yeah. For example, Ecuador. It is in the most Ecuador, difficult countries and which are the most uh, affordable yeah. the, the, the problem is, um, for example, let's talk about Ecuador. Uh, Ecuador has 
yes. a big change uh, in about this these situations maybe 10 years ago 10 years ago uh, the government saw the importance of early diagnostic in heavy problems it's part of the problem in microtia so all the hospitals the big hospitals and almost all the biggest cities has uh, very good diagnostics has uh, very good equipments and the government has a program for to, to give hearing aids bone vibrators and even cochlear implants for free to the children oh. now that's great that's great because uh, if you don't have the money to pay for assistance the government can give you for free yeah. that programs uh, similar programs you have in colombia similar programs you have in mexico and maybe are the three countries where these programs work almost okay but you have the other uh, the other view for example peru bolivia where there is not any chance that the government give this for free or even there is not good diagnostic I uh, started in my work in Paraguay uh, in October of the last year. I have a few patients in Paraguay, maybe no more than 80 cases, but 100% of these cases doesn't have any diagnostic. They didn't know anything about uh, bomb vibrators, bomb vibrator, bomb vibrator systems, for example. The government, zero. And the, the government in Paraguay is going to start a war with me. I am going to support them to give information and maybe to equip, uh, to buy equipment to put in the hospitals to start a, a program of uh, early diagnostics in these cases, for example. And it's the same in Uruguay. Argentina is in the middle. They have diagnostics. They have uh, uh, programs from the government to give for free. But for example, they use just Baja. They, uh -huh. don't, they don't know any other options. And that's, that's part of the problem. There is uh, maybe five or six options to feed these children. But many people just know the Baja. And Baja is maybe, for, for my experience, is a good device, but it's not the best option, I guess, for the cost. So it's, it's, it's different. In, in Latin America, we have a special culture. And mm -hmm. that's a problem. Yeah. Every country is, yeah, it's, it's very, it's very special. But we are in the way, I guess. Uh, and I wonder, uh, how is the collaboration between these Latin America countries? And I think the world is getting more uh, smaller. So we have to collaborate with the rest of the world. Uh, what is your plan for the future? Should we bring a uh, those people together, in your opinion, or in what kind uh, of uh, collaborations could we manage? Okay, I, I guess the first time is information. The, yeah. first, the, the first way we can collaborate with other countries is information. That's why I have a, a page in Spanish, of course, is my Crocha Latin America. It means it's a Facebook page, a web page, um, where uh, families from other countries can go and check and read uh, about our experience and what we do about these situations. That's the first thing. Second is um, I am trying to find um, other audiologists or persons uh, who wants to collaborate with me. So I train them, I try to put uh, equipment in other countries, I maybe open like a uh, other office without my presence, but uh, that's the only way, I guess. It's, it's only information. Uh, this last two months, we are in quarantine, of course, but I was uh, given um, online presentations to families. I was giving online presentations to professionals about my crotch, about diagnostic. So I guess uh, I did a lot of work these last two months <laughs> because yeah, really, I have more than three or 400 uh, new professionals interested in these situations about Latin America. Uh -huh. And that's great. That's yes. great because uh, many people, in, for example, in Argentina, they didn't know about my work. And yes. they didn't know how to work a, a child with microtia. So now they have the idea. Even yes. the same in Chile. I am uh, talking with people in Brazil, for example. Yes. The problem is the Portuguese. And so we are trying to, to, to send information to other people. That's the idea. First, information. 
because with the with a good information the parents can find a good treatment the parents can find a good professional and maybe do the right things, the yeah. right things. that's the idea i know you have really worked hard to spread this awareness to all latin america and that's i it, hope it. to collaborate with you in future as well to spread oh, no, you know you know that <laughs> you know that that's my idea I, I need to do these presentations in Europe, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and these are all my questions. If you would like to add something, we can hear, you know. Uh, it was really nice to talk with you, please. Uh, if you would like to add anything, I can. Uh, so as a last question, what would you like to say to families? Okay. <laughs> to families, first, don't worry about the static. That's the first thing. Don't worry about the aesthetic. The, the aesthetic, uh, I, I, I always say, it's very easy to say in Spanish, but I translate to English is difficult, but the beauty of the person is inside, no outside. Yeah. Could you and that, The beauty of the person is inside. Yeah. <laughs> outside is not the important thing. Yeah. If you, if you put that feeling in the, in, the, in the child, you are beauty, and you have to trust that, and you have to believe that, there's not going to be a problem. You have to give them the tools, a very good hearing aid, a very good education, and that's all. And that's all. And it, it, everything will, will go okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite simple, like that. It's quite simple. Many okay. people is, is wondering about, oh, but my child is going to the school and there's going to be a lot of bullying. Okay, that's right. That's right. It's going to be like that. But you have to put the feeling inside. If you are strong, you are going to be over that. That's not a problem. No, it will be a problem. Yeah, these are very valuable words because you're a doctor and you advise that the inner attitude is more important than the external. So exactly. we really appreciate that. Uh, and it was really nice to talk with you again, uh, Luis. It was a pleasure to me. Uh, so, uh, have a nice day. I hope after these bad days, we are going to meet again. In some yes, time. no, no, that's for sure, because I need to return to Istanbul. I have to buy something in the big market. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very nice, uh, it was very nice to see you again. And I, 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 am, I have a good feeling about the situations. We are in the hole now. All the world is in the hole. But we are going to go up with this. Yeah. And we are going to return better than, than, than before, I guess. Yeah, we hope so. Yeah. So no, thank you. We have to trust that. Yeah. That's the only way. Everything is gonna change, no problem. Yeah, I know. Now it's changing now. Now it's a big change, really, for all of us. But we have to affirm that and I guess I guess it's going to be a good opportunity, a good chance to the world to change and to see maybe uh, the money is not uh, the only way, the only goal in the, in the life, I guess, because many people have a lot of money, many people have a lot of cars, case, but it's closed in their houses, and it's not possible yeah. to do anything with that. Yeah. So we have to see it in a different way, I guess. Yeah, I think you are so right. So thank okay. you very much. No, you're welcome. You're welcome, and that's a pleasure to me as an honor to be here.